Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coat's on back order, and welcome to Squeak Week, everybody. I want to be the top percentage! What is Squeak Week, you ask? Well, if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that I have a Pokemon named Squeak. He's Eradicate, caught as a Rattata back in the Kanto region, and although this wasn't planned out in advance, it just so happens every video this week features Squeak or Radicate in some way. So I thought, let's kind of make this just a celebration of Squeak, just for the fun of it. And so you're going to see a lot of Radicate and Radita action in this week's videos. I know, it sounds exciting, doesn't it? So this week, for today, instead of doing an overall news update, what I want to do, now that Breakpoint has been officially released, and you can see all the cards on Pokemon TCG Online, I want to do one of my In the Lab strategy videos. That's where I sit down and look at all the special cards, such as the EX Pokemon, Break Evolutions, the new trainer cards, all that stuff. I sit down and give you some ideas for some strategies you can put together using these new cards if you happen to get them in the game. So we're going to start getting into that in just a moment, but first of all, I still do have a Roaring Skies booster pack that I have to open up and give the code card out to you guys. And instead of like switching the camera around, I'm just going to do it right here in front of you all. And I have to give you the question of the day, which if you leave a response to the question, use hashtag QOTD, put that all in a comment down below. On this coming Sunday, I think it's the 14th, Valentine's Day actually, you're going to enter into the running to randomly receive this code card. So. However many people enter, those are basically your chances of winning. So the question of the day is going to be, there's a lot of cool movies coming out, and I'm looking forward to seeing a few of them. Uh, I guess the question of the day is, which movie are you most looking forward to seeing in the upcoming, I guess, you know, movie season or whatever? I'm going to put it in the little line down below there. So just leave your response to which movie are you most looking forward to seeing coming up, and leave that with the hashtag QOTD. It'll enter into the running for the code card which I'm about to pull out of this pack. Right here. So this is going to go away until Sunday, and then I'll randomly choose one person that answered the question to get that card. And now for me, I'm going to get the physical cards out and see what we get out of the Roaring Skies. I'm going to pull forward a little bit and see if I can actually show you the cards as I read them off to you. Here we have Gligar, a Shuppet. It's kind of hard to see on an angle. We have a Meowth, I love that feeling fine. And a uh, Cascoon, almost said Silcoon. Last common will be Halucha. The uncommons begin with a Silcoon, well, that's why I was going to say it, I'm sure. Psychic predictions. And we have, ooh, Wally, always useful. You get to evolve a Pokemon that was put into, tur put into play that turn. You don't need to wait the extra turn. Last uncommon is a Togetic. The reverse foil is... Articuno, not bad at all. Nice and chill looking. And the rare card of Roaring Skies, wait for it, is... Ooh! It's the... Not Reverse Foil, it's Regular Foil, Ancient Trait Swellow with a Delta Plus. So if this gets a knockout on something, you get to take an extra prize card. Not bad. So that is my pack of Roaring Skies. Again, for your chance to win this code card coming up on Sunday, just leave your response to the question of the day, which movie are you looking forward to seeing most this upcoming season, and leave that with a hashtag QOTD in your comment. You're going to go into the running to get that code card. With all that out of the way, we're going to get right into the In the Lab strategy part of the video, checking out all the new breakpoint cards. Let's begin. So for starters, we're going to look at everybody's favorite part of a new set of Pokemon cards, the Pokemon EX. Starting with Darkrai here, 180 HP, Darkness Pokemon. Dark Pulse for two colorless does 20 damage plus. This attack does 20 more damage for each Darkness energy attached to all of your Pokemon. That works out really well if you have ways to accelerate your energy by putting some more darkness on. It's going to boost by 20 for every time you do that. And Dark Head for a darkness and two colorless does 80 plus. If your opponent's active Pokemon is asleep, this attack does 80 more damage. Now they revealed something on Pokemon.com for the Breakpoint expansion. A really overpowered way to use that attack. And I'll show you that as we get into some more cards. Essentially there's a way you can put Pokemon to sleep right from the bench and just do your damage right off the bat. 160. So the next EX is... Embor EX, 180 HP for a fire Pokemon, and Spiral Punch for a fire and colorless does 20 plus. Flip a coin until you get tails, this attack does 20 more damage for each heads. So not exactly reliable, you're going to do 20 base damage. If you give this Pokemon a trick coin, you can possibly try to get a little bit more damage. But Strong Flare is probably the move you're going to want to go for. 2 fire and 2 colorless does 150, you discard 2 energy attached to Embor EX. A good way to deal with that is to run Blacksmith in the deck so you'll be able to re reattach those fire energy after discarding. 
or put some burning energy in there, which automatically let you reattach them right back on after discarding them for a strong flare. Now, Espeon EX, we've already seen on the channel. I'm just going to go over it quickly. We have the 170 HP Psychic Pokemon. For one colorless energy, Miraculous Shrine says de-evolve each of your opponent's po evolved Pokemon and put the highest stage evolution card on it into your opponent's hand. So if you have ways to deal damage before attacking, for example, say the base set Greninja's Water Shuriken, or perhaps the Golbat and Crobat from Phantom Forces, which place damage counters when you evolve them, you can actually put damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon and then use SP on EX to de-evolve them to a stage where they have less HP than they have damage counters, therefore getting some knockouts. And Psy Shock for a Psychic and two Colorless, 70 damage, and this attack's damage isn't affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. Now Gyarados EX we've seen already, I believe, 180 HP, Water Pokemon, for one colorless energy, Stormy Sea says flip the coin until you get tails. For each heads, search your deck for a water energy card and attach it to this Pokemon. So if you can get a trick coin on this as well, you'll be able to possibly get yourself some decent water energy. And with two water and two colorless, you can do splash burn for 130. This attack does 10 damage to each of your bench Pokemon. So you can always have a mountain ring in play to prevent damage from the bench. Or you can actually run Mr. Mime as well with the bench barrier ability. Now we have the first of the Mega Evolutions following after the Gyarados. We have Mega Gyarados EX. It goes up to 240 HP, and we've seen the Blast Geyser attack, I've mentioned it before. Four colorless energy lets you do 120, but you may do 20 more damage for each water energy attached to this Pokemon. If you do, discard the top two cards of your deck. So, you have the option to do that. You want to try to make sure you have nothing but water energy attached, that way you're going to do an additional 80 plus the 120, so 200 and discard only two cards. Essentially, if you only have one water energy and say a few double colorless or something, you're only going to do an extra 20, but you still have to lose those two cards. So you want to max out the water energy on this Pokemon if you can. Now the next EX is Ho-Oh EX. It's a pretty interesting card, so 180 HP, and it's a colorless Pokemon with the ability Purifying Fire. Once during your turn before your attack, if this Pokemon has any basic fire energy attached to it, you may heal 50 damage from it, so that's not too bad. It's sort of difficult though, in the sense that you see the attack requires one grass, one water, and one lightning. So to make full use of this Ho-Oh EX, you're going to need a nice rainbow, get it, of energy attached to it. Anyway, so the attack is Elemental Feather, makes sense, the name based on the energy you require. 130 damage, and this attack does 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Now it's interesting, it's a colorless Pokemon, but it has weakness to water. I don't think we've ever seen that yet. Moving on, we have a Manaphy EX is the next one. With 120 HP, it is a water Pokemon with the ability Aqua Tube. Each of your Pokemon that has any water energy attached to it has no retreat cost. That's really good, you can just get some water energy out there. As you'll see with one of the Break Evolutions, which I mentioned before, you can actually move your water energy around as well, providing free retreat to whatever is in your active spot. And for two water energy, Manaphy EX can do Mineral Pump and cause 60 damage, and you get to heal 30 from each of your bench Pokemon. This Pokemon gives you some nice retreat maneuverability and some good healing and decent amount of damage dished out as well. Next we see Palkia EX, decent 180 HP, and this is a water Pokemon. For two water energy, Aqua Turbo does 40 damage, and search your deck for two water energy cards and attach them to one of your bench Pokemon, shuffle your deck afterward. Again, you can combine this with another Pokemon, the Break Evolution. I'll just mention Golduck Break. Golduck Break will let you move energy around, so Palkia EX can use Aqua Turbo, get two water energy onto the bench, then if you have Golduck Break in play, you can use that Golduck to move those two water energy right onto Palkia EX next turn, you're going to be able to use Pearl Hurricane, which takes four water energy, it does 120, and this attack does 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Next we see Scizor EX, it's a metal Pokemon with 170 HP. For one metal energy, Steel Wing can do 20, and during your opponent's next turn, any damage done to this Pokemon by attacks is reduced by 20. So a nice defensive attack, not very powerful offensively, but can slow things down a little bit as you power up for the Gale Thrust, which does 50 damage, and if this Pokemon was on the bench and became your active Pokemon this turn, this attack does 60 more damage. You can make use of that by possibly running some Float Stones in the deck for Free Retreat or Escape Rope, and if you use these in conjunction, you can actually put a Float Stone on something on your bench, play Escape Rope to bring your Floatstone Pokemon active, and then freely retreat it and bring Scissor EX up. You're going to do that 110 damage before the weakness and resistance, and possibly if you have a Muscle Band or something on there, a little bit more damage. Now you can Mega Evolve your Scissor EX into Mega Scissor EX. 
a metal Pokemon with 220 HP, and for 2 metal energy, which isn't a lot for a decent power of 120, you can use the Iron Crusher, which also has the ability to discard a special energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon, or discard a stadium card in play. That's pretty cool, you have a nice option of either or that you want to do. Next we have Togekiss EX, a fairy Pokemon with 170 HP, with the Mighty Wind attack which does 20 damage for one fairy energy. You may attach an energy card from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon. So it's not bad for energy acceleration, you get to attach basically a second energy card every turn using that. And for a fairy and three colorless, Hurricane Wing does 50 damage times the number of heads and you flip four coins. You could do a decent 200 damage, or you could do zero. Again, Trick Coin would be a nice item to attach to this particular Pokemon. So moving on to the next interesting part of the new expansion is the Break Evolutions. Here we see Golduck Break, and I've mentioned this one several times. The ability, it doesn't gain a new attack for Golduck, but it gives you an ability. So first of all, it goes up to 140 HP, and the ability Hyper Transfer says as often as you like during your turn before your attack, you may move a basic energy from one of your Pokemon to another of your Pokemon. As I said, you can use that to move the Palkia EX's water energy that it got from the Aqua Turbo. Move that right onto it, and you're going to be able to use the Pearl Hurricane. So it's going to be interesting how this comes into play, how you can just maneuver whatever energy you like. Next we see the Greninja Break, and of course we've mentioned this as well. Uh, water Pokemon, 170 HP it goes up to, and like the Golduck, it doesn't grant a new attack, it grants a new ability. Giant Water Shuriken. Once during your turn before your attack, if this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, you may discard a Water Energy card from your hand. If you do, put 6 damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. So as I've said before, we can combine that with the Base Set Greninja, and do 60 damage from the Giant Water Shuriken, and do 30 damage using the Base Set Greninja's Normal Water Shuriken, all before your attack. Of course, the Greninja Break has to be active to do that, but if you have a way to retreat it, and have something else come up and do even more damage, you're doing 90 with Greninja Break, plus whatever attack you use for that turn. It's a lot of damage to be dishing out in a single turn. So the next Break Evolution, we have Luxray Break. 170 HP it goes up to, this is a Lightning Pokemon. And for 2 Lightning and 2 Colorless, Wild Fury does 130 plus. Flip a coin until you get Tails, this attack does 40 more damage for each head. And again, Trick Coin could come in really handy to make sure you get a little bit extra damage off. Next we see Raticate Break, and when I say break, I mean this card is broken, and you'll see exactly why tomorrow. So 110 HP, Colorless Pokemon, and for 2 Colorless Energy, which means a double Colorless can power this attack, Super Fang. Put damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon until its remaining HP is 10. As I'm going to mention later in this video, combine that with something that can poison the opponent, and you basically get a knockout every single turn. The final break evolution is Trevenant Break, a psychic Pokemon with 160 HP. For a psychic and colorless, you can do Silent Fear that says put three damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon. This sets up really nicely with the Breakthrough's Gengar, which can get a knockout on anything that has three or more damage counters on it. So moving on to the Pokemon that have abilities, and I always find these interesting. This is Garbodor, a psychic Pokemon, 100 HP. 100 and HP. <laughs> 100 HP. The ability Garbotoxin. Now, if you've been playing the Pokemon trading card game for a while, you might be familiar with this name. The ability says if this Pokemon has a Pokemon tool card attached to it, each Pokemon in play, in each player's hand, and in each player's discard pile has no abilities except for Garbotoxin. So every single ability gets shut off while this thing has a tool. This can work well if you just basically run any tool and the tool retriever. So. Attach a tool to the Garbodor to shut off the abilities when you don't want them being used. For example, if your opponent has them, the moment you need to make use of any of your own abilities, play the Tool Retriever and take the tool off of Garbodor, use the abilities as you like, and then you can just reattach that tool, shutting off abilities once again. And Offensive Bomb. It sounds offensive. A Psychic and 3 color list does 60 damage, and your opponent's active Pokemon is both confused and poisoned. The next ability. Now this is what's going to work well with the Darkrai EX. Hypno, Psychic Pokemon, 90 HP. What's it doing to the Clefairy back there? And it's... I think Hypno is bridging the gap between the two worlds. Look at this. Anyway, the ability, Good Night Babies. Once during your turn before your attack, you may leave both active Pokemon asleep. Now, of course, you have to put your own Pokemon to sleep as well, but as we'll see with a Stadium card later in this video, everything just works out so well with Hypno, Darkrai EX, and this particular Stadium. 
And the attack is not that good. For two psychic energy, you do 50 damage with Zen Headbutt. Mostly Hypno is going to be used for the ability, I'm sure. Now, Meganium has a really good ability. So it's a grass Pokemon, 150 HP. The ability Overgrow says if this Pokemon's remaining HP is 50 or less, its attacks do 70 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. And Green Forest does a base 50 for two grass and a colorless. So with Overgrow kicked in, you're doing 120 and heal from this Pokemon the same amount of damage you did to your opponent's active Pokemon. If this Meganium is almost knocked out, Green Forest can probably ensure you're going to heal yourself back up to full, or pretty close there, you know, there too. Now, Raticate. This works so well with the Raticate Break. The colorless Pokemon with 70 HP has the Antibodies ability. This Pokemon can't be affected by any special conditions, and remove any special conditions affecting this Pokemon. So, if you combine Raticate and Raticate Break with the uh, Ariados from Ancient Origins, which allows you to poison both active Pokemon once per turn. Raticate will not be poisoned, the opponent will, and then you can use that Raticate Breaks Super Fang to bring the opponent to 10 HP. At the end of the turn, or rather between turns, Poison knocks out whatever that active Pokemon is. It is a crazy insane combo, it works so well, as you'll see. And if you don't have the Ariados, this Raticate itself actually can poison. With one energy, Dirty Shock says your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned, discard all Pokemon tool cards attached to that Pokemon. Another nice thing about this Raticate is free retreat cost. Now it does have low HP, even the Raticate Break is kind of low on the HP, but combined with the right Pokemon, like I say, at Ariados, this is so powerful. Next we have Slow King, a water Pokemon with 100, 100 HP, I keep saying 100 and HP. Ability is Royal Flash. Once during your turn, before your attack, you may flip a coin. If heads, move an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon to one of his or her bench Pokemon. Doesn't seem that good. It's a coin flip, and, you know, therefore it might not happen half the time. But if you actually do happen to flip heads, you can move one of these special energies, such as Burning Energy or Mystery Energy, to a Pokemon that is not the proper type, and that's going to force the opponent to discard that energy card. Because as it says on those cards, if it is attached to something other than whatever type it's related to, you have to discard it. So it's a good way to sort of discard special energies. And for a water and colorless, you can do Psych Up for 40 damage, and then during your next turn, this Pokemon Psych Up attack does 40 more damage. Next we have Suicune, water Pokemon, 120 HP. Ability is Wind Charm. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, prevent all effects of your opponent's attacks except damage done to each of your Pokemon. The existing effects are not removed. So things such as a move that forces a switch on your side of the field, Suicune blocks that, like all sorts of crazy effects that can happen, nothing will take effect except the damage. And for 3 water energy, Aurora Beam does a pretty powerful 110, that is roughly about almost 40 damage per energy you attach to it, which is actually pretty good. And this is one of the, well this is actually the promo card that came from the pre-release, this is the regular art of it of course. Trevenant, a psychic Pokemon, 110 HP, and the ability Nervous Seed says, as long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, the attacks of your opponent's basic Pokemon cost one colorless more, which works really well with the attack, you'll see here. For one psychic and two colorless, Energy Press will do 70 plus. It does 10 more damage for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. So you're going to force the basic Pokemon to need more energy, and you're going to be able to do more damage back to them. The final Pokemon with an ability from the set is Zeb Strika. Lightning Pokemon with 100 HP. Ability uh, Zap Zone says damage from the attacks of your Lightning Pokemon isn't affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. I don't think that includes weakness and resistance, because usually they say those specifically along with the effects, but things like Hard Charm or some sort of attack that reduces damage next turn, none of that's going to come into effect with the Zap Zone in play. And for two colorless, Crashing Bolt does 50 plus. If your opponent's active Pokemon has Fighting Resistance, which most flying Pokemon seem to do, this attack does 60 more damage. Interestingly enough, most Pokemon with a resistance to fighting actually have a weakness to lightning, so this is going to do 110, and most likely going to do double that, so 220. Zeb Strika could be quite a powerful Pokemon. Now, those are all the abilities and EX Pokemon and Break Evolutions, but there are a number of other cards in the set I think deserve special mentions, and we're going to start with Aegislash a psychic Pokemon, 140 HP. The first attack is the most noteworthy in my opinion. Painful Sword for three colorless energy. Double the number of damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon. This isn't something that says do damage, so Mr. Mime's Bench Barrier or Mountain Ring will not block this being done. You just simply 
double up the damage on everything on the opponent's side. So if you can get something in play, like for example a Golbat with Swoop Across, putting some damage on everything, every turn after that you're going to be able to double whatever their current damage is. And I think that is crazy, that can get a whole good number of knockouts on any given turn. I'm interested to see this come into play. And Ferrothorn. Now the cool attack here is Spike Lash. This attack does 10 damage to each of your opponent's Pokémon for each colorless in that Pokémon's retreat cost. So again, this is something that does damage across the bench. This is actually something that would be blocked by those bench protection op options, but for any opponents that do not have the protection in play, everything's going to take some damage from this thing, which is pretty, pretty crazy. And Frogadier. Now, I like this. This attack doesn't do any damage. Water Duplicate says search your deck for up to three Frogadier and put them on your bench and shuffle your deck afterward. The reason this is interesting is because if you're fighting something, for example, the Espeon EX that can de-evolve Pokemon, you actually cannot de-evolve the Frogadier that are put into play this way. They don't have a basic form underneath them. They're considered, essentially, unevolved Pokemon. So if you were to try the Miraculous Shrine to de-evolve Pokemon, those Frogadier would remain in play. Now, following suit with that, we have Greninja with a pretty interesting attack. Shadow Stitching. For a colorless energy, 40 damage, and until the end of your opponent's next turn, each Pokémon your opponent has in play in his or her hand and in his or her discard pile has no abilities, including cards that come into play on that turn. This just shuts down the abilities, and it's different than the Garbotoxin of Garbodor, because it doesn't shut down your own abilities, which is pretty amazing. And combined with the Greninja Break, you can do 100 damage each turn, first with the giant Water Shuriken, and then Shadow Stitching for 40 more. Now, Cricketot is really cool. Now, you wouldn't think much of it. It's only a grass Pokemon with 60 HP. It's a basic. But Bug Hunch, for just one grass, search your deck for up to three grass Pokemon, reveal them, and put them into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterward. Now, if you were to combine this with the Forest of Giant Plants, you can actually, for example, get a Greninja Break in play on a single turn. If you have a Chespin in hand, you can use Bug Hunch to find Quilladin, Chestnut, Chestnut Break, put them all in hand. Using that Stadium, you can then play the Chespin and evolve right up to Chestnut Break in a single turn. So, it's also good for helping to thin the deck during a battle, too, just drawing some cards out, therefore ensuring you might draw some better cards off the top. So, Bug Hunch is really powerful. I can see me putting this into one of my own decks in the TCG Online. And also, along with this, we have Cricketoon. Now, the attack is most interesting to me is the Screech attack. For one colorless, during your next turn, any damage done to the defending Pokemon by attacks is increased by 60. Now, of course, the opponent can switch their Pokemon out on their turn and bring something from the bench, but if they don't, and if that Pokemon stays active, you can actually retreat Cricketoon and bring up something else that's a little more powerful, perhaps. Whatever damage that that new Pokemon does is still increased by 60, thanks to the Screech. Now, we have Shift Tree with a pretty cool attack, the Otherworldly Return for a Darkness and two Colorless. It does 60 damage, but you get to put a Trainer card from your discard pile into your hand. Any Supporter, any Stadium, any Trainer card whatsoever you can bring right back. Next turn you'll be able to use that. So anything that brings back Trainer cards from the discard pile is actually quite impressive. Certainly shouldn't be overlooked. Now, Sigilith is pretty cool with the Reflective Shield. I like how it's coming out of a portal from the other world, it looks like. I wonder if they're going to fully explain what the two worlds of these three break expansions are going to be all about. But anyway, Reflective Shield for just one energy. During your opponent's next turn, if this Pokemon is damaged by an attack, even if it's knocked out, you put five damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. This is a good way to sort of con you know, try to convince them not to attack you, giving you another turn to set up, or, you know, if they decide to attack, they're just going to take some more damage, so... You can possibly set up whatever they attack you with for a potential knockout with whatever else you bring up. Now, I really... I just want to mention Slowbro for the attack. I know we looked at it at the pre-release, but I just want to see it again. Walk off Homer for three colorless energy. If you use this attack when you have only one prize card left, you win the game. I really want to put this into play in a TCG online deck. I know you basically already have to get yourself up to five victories, like five knockouts, to even use this but I just want to be able to say I won a game with a walk-off homer. Now, the last honorable mention is Pseudo Wudo with the Watch and Learn. It's going to be pretty cool to see this in play. For a Fighting and Colorless, if your opponent's Pokémon used an attack during his or her last turn, use it as this attack. So, you won't think much of it, really. Like, you know, depending on what they use, you're limited to what your opponent decided to attack with. But things that require you to discard, say, like, Fire Energy, like, if they use 
a flamethrower, or for example, fl uh, Embor EX's attack that discards two fire energy. You don't need the energy required to use that attack. It doesn't say that for Watch and Learn. You can simply use the attack, and if you do not have fire energy attached to Sudo Widow, you don't have to discard anything. You just get to do that damage straight up. Now, moving on to the trainer card, we're going to look at the items. There's a number of cards that have been reprinted, so there's like Great Ball, Professor Sycamore. I'm not going to go over those. Some of these items actually have been reprinted from previous sets, but as far as I recall, they're not currently reprinted from any sets that are in the standard format, so these predate the standard format. First up is the Max Elixir. Take a look at the top six cards of your deck and attach a basic energy card you find there to a basic Pokemon on your bench, and then shuffle the other cards back in. Good for energy acceleration, but it is kind of risky. You might not have an energy in the top six. And it's important to note, it only works for a basic Pokemon as well. Next, we have the Max Potion. You get to heal all damage from one of your Pokemon, and if you do, discard all energy attached to it. So it's always good to get a nice full heal in one of your Pokemon with a lot of HP. Hopefully it's not too much of a drawback to lose the energy, though. If you have some way to accelerate the energy back on, of course, that shouldn't be a problem. And the Pokemon Catcher has been reprinted. And I'm not that interested in this, because I prefer to run Lysandre for the sure thing of switching a Pokemon. But the way the Catcher works, it's basically Lysandre and a coin flip. If you flip heads, you can choose a bench Pokemon on the opposing side to bring active. Next is the Puzzle of Time. And this might be fun to use as sort of a little a what-if, you know, random chance sort of a thing. So, you may play two Puzzle of Time cards at once. If you play one card, look at the top three cards of your deck and put them back in any order. But if you play two of these cards, you put two cards from your discard pile into your hand. So you get to retrieve whatever two cards you want. That can be really powerful, actually. Now, the Bursting Balloon is a tool you attach to one of your Pokémon. If it's attached to one of your Pokémon, discard it at the end of your opponent's turn. So you have it in play for just one of your opponent's turns and then it's gone. But during that turn, if the Pokémon this card is attached to is active and is damaged by an opponent's attack, even if that Pokémon is knocked out, put six damage counters on the attacking Pokémon. So it's basically like the ace, uh, the ace spec rock guard from a previous set, but it only lasts for one turn, and being a non-ace spec, you can have up to four of these in your deck. The other tool from this set is the Fighting Fury Belt. It is something that benefits a basic Pokemon. If it's, uh, if it's attached to basic Pokemon, it gets plus 40 HP, and its attacks do 10 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So it's probably going to be mostly used for EXs, I would imagine and boost their HP by 40, and doing some more damage to the opponent. So moving on to the supporters, we start with uh, the Delinquent. Discard any stadium card in play. If you do, your opponent discards three cards from his or her hand. This actually would work pretty, pretty sinisterly if you were to play a stadium yourself just to be able to play the Delinquent. You know, play a stadium, get rid of it, making your opponent discard cards from their hand. Now we have Misty's Determination. You can discard a card from your hand, and if you do, look at the top eight cards of your deck and put one of them into your hand and shuffle the other cards back in. So if you have a card you don't need in hand, just get rid of it, and you have an option from the eight cards on top of what you need. It could just be the card you need to turn the game around and possibly win. Psychic's Third Eye. Now this, when we looked at it at the pre-release, there was a little confusion on what it meant. Your opponent reveals his or her hand, then discard as many cards as you like from your own hand, and then you draw that number of cards. Some people thought it meant you look at the opponent's cards and then discard as many of theirs as you like, and then you draw that number. But no, it's not quite that broken, but you still get to see what your opponent has coming up for their next turn, while getting rid of some cards you might not need, and possibly drawing some that you do. Now, the first stadium we're going to look at is the one I was talking about that works well with the Hypno's ability, Goodnight Babies. All Night Party. Once during each player's turn, if that player's active Pokémon is asleep, he or she may remove that special condition and heal 30 damage from that Pokémon. So, this is what you can do to help with the, say, Hypno is in play, put both active Pokémon to sleep with Goodnight Babies, wake your own Pokémon up with All Night Party, and heal it. If you're using that Darkrai EX, the opponent is asleep, you have that chance to do that extra 80 damage. It is a really powerful combo. And Reverse Valley, it's another one of those double-sided stadiums, which is pretty cool. On the one side, the bottom side here, we say, choose which way this card, okay, choose which way to face it before you play it. The attacks of this player's Darkness Pokémon do 10 more damage to your opponent's active Pokémon. On the flip side, any damage done to this player's Metal Pokémon by an opponent's attacks is reduced by 10. So, if your opponent is, uh, say you're running a Darkness deck, if your opponent is running a Metal deck, you probably don't want to play this stadium because you're going to give them defense while you give yourself attack. But it's kind of cool. I like seeing these double-sided stadiums and the 
craziness that can come from them. The final card we're going to look at from the Breakpoint expansion is the only energy in the set. It's the Splash Energy, Special Energy. This card can only be attached to water Pokemon, and it provides water energy only while attached to a water Pokemon. If the water Pokemon this card is attached to is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, put that Pokemon into your hand and discard all cards attached to it. And of course, if it's attached to anything but a water Pokemon, you discard it. So what this means is the entire evolutionary line, say the basic, stage 1, stage 2, the break, all that goes into your hand. Any energy, tools, or stuff, all get discarded. So that is the breakdown of the Breakpoint expansion. Give you some ideas for some possible strategies, but over the next several weeks, I'm going to be putting together some Pokemon TCG online decks using these new cards. And namely, Raticate Break is actually the deck for tomorrow. So if you're interested to see the first of the Breakpoint cards in play, Come on back to the channel tomorrow and check out the deck that I've assembled, and for the next several weeks we're going to see a lot more of the breakpoint cards on the battlefield. With that, I'm going to end off this particular video. Thank you for checking out this In the Lab Strategies video for the new breakpoint expansion, and I'll catch you next time.